What do you think of some of the challenges for long-term space travel? Do you think about this kind of stuff, the biological stuff? Yeah. Um, do, do you do you worry? Do you think about radiation on Mars uh, and out in space over periods of uh, actually the effects on the human body? Forget even the radiation over periods of months and years. Yeah. I think realistically, we have a really good handle on what the effects are. And we actually have the solution to like everything. <laughs> it's just whether or not we can, like, you know, for instance, one of the, you know, in low Earth orbit, one of the biggest challenges eventually if, after your long term space travel is bone density loss and not having gravity. You know, you actually have issues with a handful of things. And artificial gravity is easy in terms of relatively easy as, in terms of uh, space flight. You know, you can, you can have two vehicles just tethered together and, you know, just, spinning mm -hmm. uh, give it enough distance and a decent enough spin velocity and you can you can get one g like relatively easy we're talking again relatively easy especially after talking about theoretical physics like mm -hmm. this is that's easy stuff um we haven't done that yet but like there's there's no reason why we can't produce artificial gravity if we say that that's um you know a big enough hurdle that we absolutely have to overcome this okay cool we'll just spin up two vehicles that are going to mars and People will have, but you know, that's the thing is Mars is only about, we'll say six months mm -hmm. there. Then you're hanging out on Mars. You have 38% of gravity and then six months ish back. People live on, you know, the International Space Station at six months stints. We've had people for basically a year up on the International Space Station. It's not like it's, it's not life altering. Yeah. You have a couple days of not being able to walk very well and you do have some bone density loss and some other concerns, but like, again, that's it's solvable. And I, I think, uh, you know, the first missions to Mars, I think it might, we might, we'll probably do the trade. Is it worth it to like land on Mars and have a, a crippled crew that can't even physically stand yet, you know, for a day or two before they get their, you know, feet from underneath them? Or is it, do we need to spin up two spacecraft or, you know, a, a tether and, and have, like, you can't do it like Starship, you know, even though it's 30 feet wide or nine meters wide, if you spin it on that one axis, um, that's not enough space to get 1G uh, without your feet and your head being at two different mm -hmm. uh, velocities. So you get really sick. It'll, well, you'll always feel like you're falling. Your brain will tell you that you're falling constantly. Um, but then again, okay, so this is this is a whole thing. Is I, you know, and I don't know if there's, we don't really have the data yet on like going from 0G. We know the effects of that. We know the effects of 1G really well. That's our majority of our data set. But we don't really have much data on the long-term effects of, uh, you know, one-sixth gravity, like on the moon, mm -hmm. or thirty-eight percent gravity. Is it is one-sixth gravity actually enough to counteract ninety-five percent of the effects of low gravity, mm -hmm. or is it fifteen? You know, is it one-sixth? The is it like a linear thing? Is thirty-eight percent gravity totally, you know, thirty-eight percent as bad as one or whatever? You know, is it a slight? Like, where is it out on the on the scale? So there's a chance that we don't need anywhere near 1G of gravity to, to counteract the, the bulk majority of these problems. We could have 0.1G or whatever is the, you know, the right compromise of, of vehicle complexity and human biology and all of these other effects. Like we, this is absolutely a solvable thing. That is. And, and all we figure some of this out through just experimentation. 100%. Along the way. Yep. Uh, one of this is back to my dating life. I think one of the essential fundamental research questions I'm wondering about is uh, the dynamics and um, so the, the details of how you have sex in space. Um, asking for a friend, of course. I mean, that's, that there literally is sort of work on this, right? Because like, if you think about long-term space travel, I mean, sex is... is uh, Sort of like the there's the recreational aspect of sex, but the most important aspect of sex for long term space travel is um, uh, procreation, is and also the full biological cycle of that. So the, from the embryo to the development of the baby, the giving the birth, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So like, you know, there's a lot of really difficult problems of biology there to understand, and uh, per perhaps to solve some of that again, just like you said brilliantly. Some of that can be just solved with engineering outside of the human body by creating a, a gravitational field like that. But maybe along the way, you can figure out how to do that without doing it, but we're balancing the cost and so on. And radiation is the other thing. Like radiation. We know 
we have a really good data set on what radiation and doses do to humans. Like we we know we can measure radiation. We know we can approximate, you know, and kind of give edge cases for the Mars transient and getting to Mars and being on Mars. And the simple answer to that is like, at the end of the day, if we have to, you know, dig into Mars or find a tunnel to to live in, so you get some extra mass in between you and cosmic radiation, so be it. Like that's the that's the answer. Then no, again, none of these are like insolvable problems. They're just things, hurdles you would have to overcome based on, you know, the the risk exposure and the the posture there. Imagine being the first child, the first baby born outside of Earth. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that'll be. I, cool. w- I would love to be alive to see that. That'll so, be a big one. I don't know if it'll. Um, I don't know because it's such a dangerous thing. It's so that, risky. I think that could be in our lifetime. You think so? Yeah, I, I I would like to think in a perfect world if we're thinking futurism that in thirty to fifty years, I definitely think we could have a full time like permanent major civilizations. You know, like like um. Uh, like what Blue Origin wants to develop, where they have a a huge like sphere, you know, and you're doing a lot of uh, especially heavy in- industry off of Earth, so you're not polluting Earth. Like that's makes so much sense to me. Um, I, yeah, I think I think we we could live in a lifetime where you know we've, we've thought this since the 50s and 60s that people are going to be living and working in space like crazy, and at any given point, we're lucky to have 12 people in space today. <laughs> um, but I really think in our lifetime, we're finally getting to that point of, yeah, that that's a reality. 